the last half of the 19th century in the La Panza Mining District, located in the San Luis Obispo County, many of the claim owners held Chinese workmen. The Chinese workmen would work and live on the claims. In another area, the creek was dammed up and a bucket line dredge was used to remove around a million dollars worth of gold. The miners used various types of equipment to remove the gold, from a gold pan to a rocker box. The miners today use mules that have four-wheel drive to get to their claim. It can be a wild ride. To find the gold, you must read the rock, looking for old creek beds and areas of exposed bedrock. Did you find a place? He said he's going to dig over there. Okay, let's go and see what the heck. I'm not responsible for what you find. If it's the, that way, it was okay. So that was a dummy and started putting my rocks there and I was actually going down. There was a huge ant hole right there, so I stopped digging there. I don't know if they're still there. This one hasn't been dug in in two years. Gold is heavy. It is 19 times heavier than water and twice as heavy as lead. So it goes to the bottom of the creek, under rocks. So it is sometimes necessary to move large rocks out of the way and get to the riches underneath. There you go, Mitch. All right. The main objective is to get the small amount of gold from the large out of the large material. So it is necessary to classify the material down to its smallest size. We use different size screens to achieve this. Look at the camera. Tell me who you are and where you're from. Pedro Soto from the Cascadero. And how long have you been prospecting? Uh, about six, maybe seven years. Oh, well, you're going to say months. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your name and where are you from? Well, I'm Jose Soto from Creston. Creston? I'm his father. Right. Awesome. <laughs> I have been prospecting on and off with him. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 
The Gold Killer is a new twist on this. It is a recirculating high banker sluice box and it is made to catch large and small gold alike. The gold cube is a newer type which uses an underflow design where the gold is held in underflow riffles at each end of the box. So the water zigzags vertically down the box. This gold cube uses a classifier on top to get rid of as much large material as possible. There's times where I'd know about it, like when I was working with Marshall, yes, I know I was overloading it. Right. How many buckets? Right. Me by myself, I can only do about 10 buckets a day, maybe 15. And, and that's moving, and that's with me doing everything myself. Right. And I was overloading it. Right. Um, but with my trommel, the, the hold up is taking the bucket. Yeah, I've been running. Is it a timer? I don't know what it is. Is it making people on picking? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hope. What is it? What is it? The dry washer uses air instead of water, but does the same action. It catches the gold in the riffles and lets the lighter material fly off the end so you can run it again or discard it later. The dry washer needs the material to be very dry or it clumps up. Usually it's louder because it's got a metal block in the back. This has got rubber. The guy customized it so when it's allowed in the backyard. I want to listen to this one. It's loud and dirty. And yeah. This isn't half the... I like it. And this is your new one? Yeah. like the my other one with the air mm -hmm. I pull a lot of gold out of the inside because there's little gaps also you can just kind of sweep and I broom it, and it put it out the and I put it in a card there's a plug but I just put it on a card and put it in the bucket pan and you can see the gold if you've run a lot like a yard you'll see the little gold against that silver backing 
Well, what was that? Uh, six bags? Uh, seven. Seven. And that took you about 20 minutes. Yeah, it, it was a lot faster if I had just went and did it. But I'm new. It's new to me, so. Right. Look at the black sand. See it? Yeah. a little bit of dirt in there. Fine, fine stuff that gets in. Yeah, because that's the whole name of the kid. Not as good on this one. No? Yeah, that's something. Yeah. Not as good. Now, is that all their, the dirt that you did? That was just one scoop. That was anything. <laughs> I'm just there. Yes. And to me, that is true relaxation. You know, and you're in the heart of nature, and you hear the birds. How many buckets? About 20. Oh, there's oh, some yeah. bigger pieces that went, uh, went down. Beginning panning. First step, fill up the pan with as much material, dirt, as you can. And then we use a classifier that puts everything down to, in this case, a quarter inch. Second thing, you want to get in there, move everything around, get your hands in there. You want to move everything around. This is called liquefaction. Getting everything liquefied. What this does is it moves the heavy material right down to the bottom of the pan. Third step, classification. Or, um, washing. Washing the material down. Just like at the beach, the ocean moves the material down and leaves the heavier stuff and takes the lighter sands away. This is the same thing with the different weights of sand, getting it down to the heavier black sands, which are hematite and magnetite. Now it's just a repeat process, liquefying, stratifying, washing. So there I am. Liquefying, making sure everything is liquid in the pan. You can see it's all moving around as one. Stratifying. Moves everything to the bottom. And then washing. Takes that lighter stuff off. Gold is 19 times heavier than water. Twice as heavy as lead. So what you do to practice is take lead BBs. And then you'll find a piece of gold half the size of that bead. Now you can see we're getting down to the black sands. The gold is going to be heavier than the black sands. What these grooves do is it makes sure the material doesn't come off when you don't want it to. It kind of holds on to the, the heavier stuff while the light stuff goes away. Now the reveal. All that's black sand. And you'll see that the gold does not move. That right there is a piece of gold. And that's always what you're looking for. The Central Coast Gold Prospectors is the local chapter of the GPAA, the Gold Prospectors Association of America. They are a great way to meet and learn from people 
that have many years of experience. AMRA is the American Mining Rights Association. Their main objective is to keep the small time miner mining. They do this with fighting with lawsuits and the National Forest Service. AMRA and the Central Coast Gold Prospectors use raffles to fund their organizations. The Central Coast Gold Prospectors raffles goes to meeting locations, insurance, and the gold outings that happen twice a year. This is the turnout for the outing that took place at the beginning of October 2016. A lot of people showed up and had fun for the weekend. The club welcomes families and kids. Some like to have fun while some want to work. Prospecting is fun. Getting out and enjoying our public lands with a little reward at the end.